spend a little bit of time talking about what I call the perfect moment. I'm going to bet that all of us in this room have experienced a perfect moment and have a hunch that maybe some of you experienced one even today. So my most recent perfect moment was when I was sitting in my office working, and I got a ping that said, I need to get in a car to come to La, K La Kaching Center to give my talk, and I needed to leave now to beat the traffic patterns. Another example of a perfect moment might be you're in the car, your tire gets flat, you receive a call on the side of the road for someone who's going to come and actually help you fix that tire. Sir Arthur Clarke, who's known as a futurist, what a great description for someone, has a quote that says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We're surrounded by amazing consumer technology today. Netflix has probably saved all of us in the room thousands of dollars from our late fees from Blockbuster. <laughs> Even better, it predicts what we might like or what our kids might like to watch next. Ride shares have saved us from standing in the rain in New York City waiting for a car, or even allowed us in the small hometown where I grew up, Winona, Minnesota, to find a car service. So what is this? This might be called precision consumerism. What does precision consumerism have to do with precision health? Well, hopefully a lot. So if we're going to talk about precision health, we have to talk about chronic conditions. Those of us in the room know that there is a high prevalence of chronic conditions, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, congestive heart failure, muscular skeletal issues, and the costs are astronomically high. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an epidemic. Today's approach to chronic conditions is quite simply not working. How many here, and I really can't see any hands, so you don't need to raise your hand if I can't. How many people here have a chronic condition today? So a few. So I, I do. So I live with type 1 diabetes, and I've lived with type 1 diabetes for 30 years. And the system's not built for those of us with chronic conditions. The healthcare system's not built to take help, help empower us to do better. It's really for two main reasons. One is that I spend 99.99999% of my life outside of the office of my endocrinologist. He's lovely, he's distinguished, he is kind, he is incredible medical acumen, yet I make decisions every minute, every hour that impact my condition. The other reason that chronic condition management is failing in this current system is that despite the mass amounts of data that we have today, we have yet to be able to understand how to help change people's behavior. So here's another audience participation. You can make this one vocal. Let's, let's operate under the assumption that all of us in the room are trying to lose somewhere between two to five pounds of weight. If I say to you, there is a piece of dessert, or a, an option for dessert, that is 60 calories. Is it the bowl of watermelon or the large chocolate chip cookie? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the person. Well, OK, so we're going to go with the bowl of watermelon, the 60 calorie option. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, right? do you want to have more calories or less calories? Fewer, fewer, that's right, that's good, good grammar correction. Thank you for that. <laughs> fewer calories. So with that data, with that knowledge, how many of us, and it's in the assumption that we're wanting to lose weight, how many of us still chose the large chocolate chip cookie for lunch? Okay? This is, this is the issue when we're thinking about data to drive precision health and chronic conditions. It's not just about clinical data. It's about how do we change behavior? What's the data that's going to help us do that? In order to drive behavior change, we must deeply understand each person. The parts of the person we need to understand include demographics, gender, age, where they live, clinical, what are their conditions, how well are they being controlled, what medications are they on, and very importantly, behavioral. What motivates somebody? With whom do they want to share their information? Imagine a world where we actually knew precisely what action to take and we were motivated to take that. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about Livongo as a case study. 
Livongo is a behavioral health company that is driving to empower people with chronic conditions to live better and healthier lives. We do that in diabetes, we do that in hypertension, and we were recently newly doing that in diabetes prevention. Livongo is fueled by data. As a young company, we're collecting now one million blood glucose readings every 21 days, which is more, um, mass amounts more than the largest uh, you know, uh, meter and strip producers today because of the ability to be connected in this ecosystem. And what are we doing with that data? Well, we're taking the data and we're putting it together to drive insights to help change people's behavior. So this is where the health services researcher in me likes to shine. This is looking at some cluster analysis that we've done. The gradation here is, the question is, meter use in the first 30 days. When we send some a meter, how, how quickly or how much are they using that meter within the first 30 days? Blue is very little, red is a lot. So if you're in cluster A, you are using that meter a lot in the first 30 days. Cluster P, not so much. Then we double click. Double click again to cluster P. What can we understand about those people who are not using that meter in the first 30 days as frequently as the other people? Well, they have been recently diagnosed with their, with their condition of diabetes, and they're not using insulin. Taking that information, we can then combine that information together to help drive behavioral change. So what we do in a very closed loop system is understand which messages are effective and result in behavioral change. 40,000 different ways to tell somebody to do the same thing, right? Think about your children. How many times do you ask them to make their bed but use different words to try to motivate them to do it? The second is which communication channels are best? How do we communicate today to our parents or to our teenagers, right? And then the last is what interventions are most important? So in the clinical criteria, is it taking your medications? Is it exercise? Is it nutrition? What are the interventions that are most driving that outcome? And it's really only in healthcare with this data, if we put it together cohesively to look at behavioral change and chronic conditions, that we can then start to bring forward precision health and start to create that magic moment within the healthcare within chronic conditions. Thank you so much.